for the offense. Let's kind of we're moving on from there and breaking down the offense now. So some good news is coming out of, of the offensive side of things with uh, with, with Jack. Look, I was I was I was team Jack, and then the spring game came out, and I was very critical of Jack. Uh, but it seems to be that he he heard my criticism and went home on the offseason and, and, and dialed it in because uh, a lot of good news is coming out of of, of the uh, camp now that uh, he's been playing a lot of uh, reps, you know, uh, first first snaps, first team snaps, and, and doing well and, and picking things up. I've seen a few passes by him. They look they look much better. Um, again, it's not game time. I get that. But he just looks more confident. And he, he, he acknowledged that he struggled in the spring game, so it's good to hear. Obviously, we know Anthony is, is thriving and, and doing well. Looks very comfortable, making a lot of great passes. Uh, the running back room. This is something that we actually talked about last episode. Who do we think is going to be number one? I I said Lorenzo, depending on how the offense goes, probably Montrell. Steve, you were all in on Lorenzo, and it looks yep. like there's been a shift where Lorenzo is going first, then Naquan, then Montrell. But it, it seems to be a, a yeah, it seems to be a very kind of rotating wheel at the moment. It isn't, and and we talked about it. Like nobody really knows, and that's what makes the conversation very exciting because it is wide open, in my opinion. Uh, uh, Trevor Etienne, he's he's with the backups with Jack Miller and Max Brown and with those guys. But uh, man, it's what what's your take, Dave? Steve and I talked about it a little bit. What what is your take on, on those three guys, and who do you think is going to really take over the, the the running back room? Well, it's a good problem to have, right? You don't know it's who's going to start. All too good. <laughs> if, 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 if if they're all studs, yes. If you're trying to figure out who to put there because like this is a disaster, then no, it's not good. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's a. They're all really good, and it's just like, who's going to fit into this better? And I think, look, we worked out with Lorenzo. Again, he couldn't keep up with me, as we've mentioned plenty of times on the show. Uh, but he put it, He you could tell the work was put in, and it's it's it's, it's exciting to see that it's it's paying off. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny, too, because uh, I go, you go to uh, – there's, there's a site called rlads.com, and they have a lot of other things on there, but they do roster uh, breakdowns, too, of guys that could be possibly first round, second round, third round, whatever – it, you go and look at Florida's roster at the beginning of the season. They don't really do that because you, you don't really know. So they just give a roster breakdown. And it's funny. They got Montreal Johnson listed first. Naquan Wright listed second. Lingard listed third. ETN listed fourth. Now, of course, they don't follow yes. the team. They don't know any of that kind of stuff. But it's, I thought this was really funny, too. They got Lingard <laughs> on kick return and Xavier Henderson on, on punt return. But that doesn't mean anything either. But I, as I said, it's a good problem to have. But I would think, man, just with the speed that Lorenzo Lingard has, you have to put him number one. But you got a good one-two punch with either Naquan Wright or Montrell Johnson. But, you know, Napier... Having Montreal Johnson come over from Louisiana Lafayette, uh, you know, a kid that you know, was a freshman uh, Sun Belt Player of the Year, um, he's proven that he can do it in the Sun Belt. Uh, he comes to the SEC. Uh, you know, game doesn't change when you know a system from Louisiana Lafayette and you follow a coach to Florida. The game doesn't change for him, so he's experienced in this system, and I think his experience will put him a little bit ahead in his accolades that he had in the Sun Belt. But as I said, there's three talented backs right now. ETN, obviously, he's just an incoming freshman. But I've heard a lot of good things about ETN in these ball practices as well. So it's really, I, I would pick, I would think it would be Lingard and Montrell right now. But Naquan Wright, who knows, man. And all I, all I want to see is two running backs getting carries, and I don't want to see them splitting seven reps every game. <laughs> well, the one thing I will say for uh, for ETN, uh, that the kid is is just built like a tank. Uh, he's five nine two seventeen. I mean, I, I'm sure he's quick. I'm sure he can uh, he can he can run some flare routes. So, you know, but my gosh, a kid that's that that's that like built is in the way that he's built. I mean. He, you know, you could do a lot with that. You can go into a power game. You can clearly leave him in the, in the backfield to give uh, to give uh, Richardson an extra blocker, get a little bit more time to throw. Um, I, I was unaware how big that kid was uh, since obviously we didn't see him much last year. Um, well, we talked about him last year, but we didn't. We haven't seen him in, in in pads yet. But my gosh, that's 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 a sizable kid to be walking out there uh, as a freshman playing your first game. And I have to imagine that uh, that Billy will get him a, a rep or two here and there somehow, some way. There's too much talent there. So, well, I'll so say, go ahead. Go ahead. 
I was going to say, well, I also think that uh, one of these running backs is going to get some time on special teams returning something. So it, I would say, it, and I said this yesterday, ETN probably might get some time at kickoff return. You don't really want to put a wide receiver back there taking hits and all that other kind of stuff coming the other way and, and colliding with somebody coming the other way too. Uh, but as I said, Xavier Henderson, he returned kicks last year. Not the best kick returner. One heck of a wide receiver. Doesn't need to be returning kicks though. Um I, I'm curious. We we all have question marks. Who's going to be on pit, punt and kick returns? Most teams are kicking it out of bounds anyway right now, but you know, who, who gets the punt return? Like, who, who gets to catch the ball? Who gets to run with it? We didn't see a lot of special teams last year. We didn't see a lot of special teams under Dan Mullen. I mean, I think we only had, what, two, maybe three touchdowns in four it's years? Game-changer special- coordinator to you, Dave. Okay. Yeah, game-changer coordinator. <laughs> um, so, as I said, man... Uh, the longest kickoff return last year, and I ran the PFF stats on this, was from Lloyd Summerall in the UCF game. So special teams has to change. Like, there, there's no, uh, there's hardly a blocked kick. There's hardly a blocked putt. There's hardly a good return. Obviously, it's a new coach to do system. And you saw some of the, the, the special teams over at Louisiana Lafayette, man. I think, I um, can't even remember who the guy's name was. I think it was Chris Smith, I believe, returned two kicks in one game <laughs> at Louisiana Lafayette. And it was something I liked to see when I was watching at, looking at Louisiana Lafayette's film. So, uh, as I said, Billy Napier, and he has the game changers and all that. So, I think that you, I'm not, I don't think I know the special teams is going to change. It's just curious to see if one of these running backs in this rotation of the stable running backs that we got isn't getting reps, if he gets the chance to return kicks. So, you mentioned, David, too, they. You, you don't want multiple running backs taking seven reps, right? Because I felt like last year we didn't utilize the running backs well. It, to me, it feels like we're headed back down that road, though. Because it's, it, you don't think so? No. I, I, I don't think it's going to be, you know, seven reps. I, I think what Billy Napier is going to do, and he may have to figure this out at the beginning of the season, he's going to take the best running back, the most productive running back, give him the bulk of the carries, have a, you know have another guy, back there that takes the other bulk and maybe even throw in a third string running back here and there. But I think you're really going to see a very more run heavier offense. And he, he talks about run heavy RPO, that sort of system. So, I mean, with Anthony Richardson's legs back there too, you could do some, you know, two tight end sets or two running back sets, whatever, try to throw a, a defense off. But as I said, man, I, I think there's going to be more run in this offense. So I think the running backs are going to get a lot more carries, and you're not going to see a case where Damian Pierce is like a clearly the best running back on the field, and they're just not feeding him the ball. So that's my take on it. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit last week in, uh, in just a little of a fantasy football teaser on uh, some of the news coming out of the Houston Texans camp on how well Damian Pierce is acclimated oh. to, uh, to the NFL and how strong he's been and how well he's been playing. And I think uh, – even just reading some of the uh, the Florida fans' reactions to uh, to that article, uh, nothing short of frustration. Like, what what were we doing for two years with this kid? We couldn't keep him on the field, and I, I guess it kind of puts things in summation, uh, you know, for uh, for Mullen. But uh, you look, know, Pierce Pierce was a beast. Yeah. He is, and, and I'm curious to see what he can do with the Texans, man. He, he, that kid has very low mileage, <laughs> so he's True. hardly ever. I don't think he's ever been hurt, and he has no mileage whatsoever. That kid is going to plow through people. I mean, he, he's got great vision. He may not be the fastest back on the field, but uh, you know, neither was Marshawn Lynch, and I'm not going to compare him to Marshawn Lynch or anything like that. But you don't have to be the fastest running back on the field to be a productive running back in the NFL. Sure. No, Lorenzo definitely said he was the strongest. Uh, he 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 raved about how strong Pierce was when so it was uh, different level Shelton. of strength. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His, body his, types. his yeah his his warm ups were other guys maxes on on but squats. Lorenzo actually like that. said that I reminded him of Damian. Oh yeah, yeah. I was there. I saw that. It one hundred percent crazy. Like, it was just unbelievable. Uh, it was a hell of a compliment too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so going back to that a little bit more. So last year the running back was split more 50-50, I would say. Not not exactly, but it was it like again, there it should have been more 80-20 than what it was, right? To where the running back could get into a rhythm. And then obviously if the guys get tired, they throw in, you know, the the, the 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 second string. It wasn't the case. So you're saying this year someone's gonna pull ahead and it's gonna be that the 60, 30, 10 type of room. That's the, that's your feel on where we're headed. 
Yeah, I would say so. I I would say there's going to be a main back in this system. You might see the 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 second running back come into the system a little bit more as well. It just depends. You know, you, you got to give a running back time to rest on the sideline if he's carried the ball at least 20 times during a drive. Sure. So, I mean, you're going to see the the second string or third string running back or you may even see the 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 second and third string share reps, but he's going to have one main running back. And and that's from what I've seen from his offenses. He has one main running back rotates another one out and uh he could rotate the third with the second but you're gonna have one main running back okay good good stuff good good to see uh then we're gonna break down the, the wide receiver room which this seems to be more of a shoe in with these guys with shorter uh xavier henderson and then ricky those being the kind of the, the three guys it's it's pretty much a lock the, again the and we've we've talked about it kind of hinted towards it earlier the depth is where the issue comes into play uh, Frazier is one that I'm big on. I, I he he looked good to me in the spring game. I think he's going to be a surprising factor uh, that people aren't uh, prepared for. Um, Bordingham, the tight end slash wide receiver freshman, I think he's going to come in and, and have an impact uh, as well as uh, Keon Zipper. I mean, he's obviously in the tight end window, but I mean, I feel like in college you can kind of loop them, you know, lump them all together. And then uh, uh, Trent Winnemore is showing some some great flashes. He had that great one handed catch. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was that was fun to watch. Uh, the the clip from there. So it looks like was they're having fun. Good South Carolina game. No, no, no. Trent was uh, in the practice this week. It was oh, a pass from Jack that. Miller. Uh, I watched like six, seven times in a row. Like just a nice little one handed catch, a little out route, and uh, so just, he, just scooped he did it. That. He did that against South Carolina, too. I think Kyle Trask overthrew a football, and it should have been picked by the DB uh, behind Trent Winnemore, and he pawed up and got it. So, uh, yeah, that's one of those guys that I'm actually really excited for. I mean, the dude's wingspan seems like it goes on forever. Yeah, it's, he, he's he's clawing, they, they're they saying, for, for that, that spot. So, I think the wide receiver room, they, they've been getting a lot, of, a lot of flack from everybody on not being, you know, good enough, not having enough depth, you know, being the, the biggest concern. And we, we, we talked about it too, Steve, just about two or three weeks ago. Of like, look, I think that they heard it. They heard the noise. They heard the nonsense. And they're like, look, we're not going to be the problem, child. We're not going to be the guys <laughs> that you talk about come, come game time, right? It's going to be somebody right. else. And I, again, this goes back. To, we keep going back to this, to the white socks. I've been mentioning it all week. You and these uh, white socks. My look, gosh. man, it's, 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 it's an image, right? When you hear that, you know what I'm talking about. It's a discipline, right? It's, it's the accountability. That's what I'm referring to, that that mindset it's everyone's kind of holding themselves accountable. Like I don't want to be the dead weight. I don't want to be the reason why we're not being successful because it, it, the energy again, that everybody is feeling is like, look, we're headed the right way. So that, that group's getting a lot of good, good praise. The quarterback room is doing, you know, sounds great. The offensive line with uh, Osiris is getting a lot of praise. They sound like they're better than normal. The, the DBs and cornerback room, a ton of great news with Devin Moore coming from from that area. Kamari Wilson, freshman, right? Those two guys are stepping up and and, be, and doing great things. So the wide receiver room is the only room we're really getting on a flack. The running back room, obviously, we just just salivated over that for twenty minutes on how you one know, after the other after the other of yeah. how great that room is. So you look at it, and the wide receivers like, well, again, we're not going to be that guy. So it's good to see that the the you know the, the saying that I keep hearing is all rising tides float boats or whatever. I can't even say it the right way, but I've been hearing about it. I felt like for a while, it's ever since Jin said it on uh, the cast, I, I've been hearing it everywhere from, so hopefully I, I butchered it. I know that I did and I apologize. It's okay. It, it was close enough and we, we get the gist of what you White were Sox. for there. White Sox, boys. Yeah, it's White, White Sox. Sox. That's all that matters right now. That's all that matters right now. Look, to your point real fast, Jaquavi and Fra- Fra- uh, Frazier. Frazier's, if, if I'm saying his last name, uh, sophomore, 6'4", 212, that's uh, that's, that's my guy. That's a big kid. That's yeah, my dark that, knight pick for this year. Like I don't, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't just like a, just from height and weight. You you feel like you you've got somebody there that can out out athlete uh, a cornerback uh, in in a, in a jump ball situation. Which mm. you, you sometimes you're going to have those, and you just want to have somebody that you can trust that's got the size, especially maybe on a little fade route in the uh, the back of the end zone. You just want somebody that can get up and over. Uh, and, and be able to take a ball out of the out of the cornerback's hands, or just keep the cornerback out of the play. Uh, with that kind of size, you're looking at something that's a little bit smaller than a Kelvin Benjamin. But if he if he grows just a bit, uh, he's he's right at Kelvin size, maybe without the the fat. Uh, Joe Sean Cruz says this yeah. team will be the most surprising team in college football. Book it. We just got a dislike. It was probably the way that I said all tides float boats. Comment. <laughs> I'm sure that was it. 
<laughs> that was definitely the, the the zinger on that one. I apologize for that again. Or maybe it was like a, a baseball White Sox fan, and you just made fun of White Sox. That's the truth. Or a Red Sox, a well. Red Sox fan, and maybe I was too much about the White Sox. Okay, that's either way. <laughs> either way, I love it. Uh, Joe wants to know: Is Holly a closet Gator fan? I, it's look. There's been signs. Okay, we've heard some rumors. <laughs> all right, we've. Hey, I would say there's been some crystal ball predictions that 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 could be all signs point to yes. Can I get a button, please? Can I get my button? Fight for FSU! Fight, baby, fight! <laughs> so, yeah. it, I love it. it. Holly <laughs> said go Gators. I, I keep hearing I that he never did. Said this. Somebody I put disagree. a super chat in the room under my, and they put it under my name. I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm over here running the chat. I, I never said that. Dis, I, never I, dis, I just, I don't believe it. Steve I is, will trust the analytics. I can assure you it never did it. It never mm -hmm. happened. <laughs> I disagree. I, I got the say, there's some, in there backing me up. I won't even wear orange. <laughs> go ahead, David. There's some be out there at Telgates too, so, yeah. You know. All right. Now we're talking. <laughs> um, let's, so let's move on. We got, look, 